for the first time since we all found out what COVID-19 was, we now finally have a date on the calendar for when the new normal will be here. And one of the most exciting things we found out today, which was when nightclubs, yeah, dance clubs are going to open. And in that honor, we want to dedicate tonight's 10 to the disco edition. We have our disco ball here that we'll be boogieing to throughout tonight's show. And as we explore not only what opens when, but also what doctors think about this timeline. Is it realistic to think that we could finally feel the city breaking and everybody shaking, or could the dance floor stay empty a little longer? That's our starting point tonight. So let's play that funky music as we get a check of what's happening when here in Massachusetts. There are four important dates you need to know about. We'll first focus on this Friday, April 30th to the music. That's when face coverings will be relaxed to at least the rule for some outdoor settings. If you're outside and socially distanced, your mask can come off. Then on May 10th, crowds at large venues can increase capacity to 25% capacity, and amusement parks and water parks can open at 50% capacity. Road races are back on, and indoor singing, yep, that'll be allowed, except for me, because I have a terrible voice. And on May 29th, gathering limits go way up. 200 people can be indoors, 250 outdoors. Bars will be subject to restaurant rules with the 90-minute seating rule that we saw at restaurants earlier. And then restaurants can also start seating tables up to 10 people. Then finally on August 1st, all industry restrictions will burn, baby burn, and they'll be lifted. And capacity will increase to 100% for all industries, which of course will mean Disco Inferno. And now all of this is also subject to each individual funky town or city to decide. And no surprise for Boston, it's more of a slow jam. Mayor Kim Janey says the city will operate on a slightly different timeline on a three-week delay. So what that means is that 100% capacity won't happen in the city until August 22nd. The only major exceptions with this is the outdoor mask mandate lifting this Friday and the increased capacity limits at stadiums like Fenway Park and the Garden. Those will happen on May 10th. Now, we asked Dr. David Hammer about whether or not this is a good idea. Waiting until we're in a really good place in terms of the uh, coverage of vaccinations and, and, and reduction in transmission is important. And I think that the decision to, to sort of have Boston follow, uh, at least in time, uh, the, the what's happening with the state is, is a reasonable choice. And, and it will help if, if there's going to be any potential sh- short-term surge in, in hospitalizations. It'll help basically prevent that from happening or, or limit it. And no matter what city or town it is, we can all, we can't wait to basically freak out and safely dance with somebody. So how do we do that? And is this a reasonable outline for reopening? Here's Dr. Mark Seidner, an infectious disease clinician at MGH, who says it is only if we hit one major factor. These guidelines show us that there is a pathway back to normalcy which we've all been wanting for the last year, year and a half. And so I think we're all going to see these and and be happy to know that there is a possibility that this can be behind us in the next few months. I think the other thing to know is that, you know, the first six words, at least for the August 1st warning, is that this is subject to public health and vaccination data. So to get there, especially to the end where things have really loosened up, we do need to accomplish some goals with vaccination and hopefully we can get there by by the end of July. So vaccinations are the key to making sure. Get there by, by the end of July. So if vaccinations are the key to making sure we reopen safely, how are we doing? Governor Charlie Baker addressed this during today's reopening. In terms of first doses and total doses administered per capita among states that have more than 5 million people. And as of this week, we are number two in the nation among all states in terms of first doses per capita, which is a big statement about our ability to efficiently distribute vaccines and our residents' eagerness to get vaccinated. You just heard it there. We are among the top states in the country when it comes to vaccination rates. And since we are family, I know that's pushing it, right? But let's take a look at how many residents have gotten a shot. Control room once again. Cue the more generic music for this one. There we go. The latest state data shows that about 3.4 million people have gotten at least their first dose. 2.4 million people in the state are fully vaccinated. Woo, ready to party. We asked Dr. Seidner to put this into more context for us. Are the numbers realistic enough to assume that our goals will be met by the time business reopens at 100%? 
I think it's realistic and I think we can achieve it, but I don't think it's going to be easy. I think the biggest barrier is that there are still large groups of the population who may not want to get vaccinated and yet ha haven't gotten the, all their questions answered as they need to. Even now, we're seeing about 15 percent of people in Massachusetts over the age of 60 who have been eligible for the vaccine for quite some time, not having even received one dose of the vaccine. And in Massachusetts, we know one of the top states for vaccinations, but it's far from the first state to reopen everything to 100 percent, far from that. So when we're talking about safely reopening the economy in the Bay State, how does that compare to other parts of the country that have already dropped their mask mandates fully and reopened? Well, we can learn from those places. We know that as people distance less, infections happen more. The key difference is in those previous instances when relaxations took place, they weren't in the setting of a vaccination campaign. So I think we're hoping that this time, and even if you look at the numbers now, you know, deaths are as low as they've been since the epidemic started. Hospitalizations are down about 50 percent in the last few weeks. The numbers are looking good, but we're not out of jail yet. We need to make sure that we're watching these numbers carefully. And we also need to have the courage, if these numbers go back in the other direction, once the mask mandate starts to loosen, once some of these restrictions start to loosen, if vaccinations don't keep up as fast as they should and the numbers go in the other direction, we have to have the wherewithal to slow things down. Now, we did get some updated federal guidelines today as well. The CDC says fully vaccinated Americans don't need to wear masks outdoors anymore unless they are in a big crowd of strangers. The change comes as more than half of U.S. adults have gone at least one dose. And more comes as more than half of U.S. adults have gone at least one dose. And more than a third have been fully vaccinated. The CDC says that uh, vaccinated or not outdoor spaces. So here was President Biden earlier today. Gathering with a group of friends in a park, going for a picnic, as long as you are vaccinated and outdoors, you can do it without a mask. Now, the CDC added that no one vaccinated or not needs to wear a mask outdoors when they're out for a walk or a run by themselves or with family members. That's a relief for runners out there. And Maine was one of the first states to embrace the CDC's new guidelines. Governor Mills announced Maine will be following the CDC's recommendations effective immediately. The governor, though, reminded people masks are still required indoors and social distancing rules remain in place. And all of these changes are welcome news for industries that we've covered extensively here on the 10, like road races and weddings. Get ready for that disco ball where everyone is waiting to hit that dance floor. And ECN's Brian Burnell has more. Plans to relax the outdoor mask mandate on Friday have some a little concerned. I don't think enough people are fully vaccinated and I don't think the infection rate is low enough. Most, though, are breathing a sigh of relief. We're outside. We're not next to each other. So I don't see why we have to wear a mask, especially if we've had the shots. There are other changes coming, too. On May 29th, event venues can host 200 people indoors, 250 outside. Think weddings. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> Blair Mitchum is a wedding planner whose brides have had to cut back for months. She has one whose date is June 11th. And we've been shipping out invitations and batches to see where the guidance falls. And she texted me this morning and says she can, you know, mail out another 25 invites today. Backyard weddings are doable as well under the new numbers. That's huge in the wedding business. <laughs> On May 10th, outdoor athletic events like road races can fire the starter's pistol again with staggered starts and a safety plan. The Boston Marathon is scheduled for October 11th. BAA President Tom Grilk says the relaxed guidelines enhance plans already being made. We will bring runners out from Boston in buses that are timed to get to the start at the time that the runners are scheduled to start. So they'll get off the buses and fairly promptly after that, move right to the starting line and just go. Brian Burnell, NECN. So excited for both runners and, of course, all of these brides. So when can we all press play and get back to the real normal, basically partying, right? Well, in order to do that, we need herd immunity. Dr. Seidner says it's possible, but it's not exactly around the corner. So in order to get to a place where we can go back to normal, we're talking probably at least 70 to 80 percent of the population, and it really needs to be distributed evenly. There can't be large groups of people, say those over a certain age, certain communities with low levels of immunity, because those communities will still be suffering from this, from this virus if that happens. So basically, let me put it to you with a few more songs. If you want to get down... And maybe take in some shots, shots, shots. You got to get the shot, guys. Okay, that's basically what you have to do.